What's up guys, welcome to today's video. To start off, we are at a little hill in the background. We've driven by this hill every single day going to Super D and Nicole keeps saying she wants to climb it. I'm telling her there's lots of scorpions. Sure enough, <laughs> we look up things to do in the area and Bell Mountain is a common attraction. So what are yeah. we doing, Nicole? We're gonna climb Bell Mountain and not get bit by any scorpions. So in case you're wondering, a uh, little bit of facts about Bell Mountain in Apple Valley, California. We drove this magnificent dirt road here. Uh, shout out to the truck, putting it to great use. This mountain's actually about three, well, not three, five, not five, it's 1,700,000 feet that's in elevation. only 3,800 feet. That's it? Yeah, it's only 3,800 feet. Nicole got worried that I was gonna try to drive up it and she wanted to do the hike instead. So anyway, um, yep, we're gonna do that. It's steep and quick. One thing that I forgot to mention is of course on the day that we decide to climb the massive mountain, there's a high wind advisory warning. Yes. Whatever that means. It's definitely windy. 30 mile per hour winds right now. That sounds lame, but I guess that's enough for a warning. <laughs> I know I've said this before, but I think it's the funniest thing. Whenever I see the mountains like this in the distance, does it make you think of Motocross versus ATV unleashed when you like go to the edge of the track and it boomerangs you back. Childhood memories right there. Alright, let's go. As we get up higher, it's more of like a little rock climb than a trail. Nicole's loving it. She's a little monkey. Um, yeah, that's about it. The wind's getting a bit fast, although it's working in our favor, so we chose the good side of the mountain. Climb. This isn't my dad joke self exaggerating. We did it in 30 minutes. Great job, Nicole. You only cracked your sunglasses and lost them. I think it's an hour to hike up and down. It's too good. What? I think it's an hour to hike like they broke it down. You don't think it's each way? Oh. This is the view. Nice. Great view. Going down seems to be taking like almost twice as long as going up. I don't know if that's normal with this type of thing, but uh, I don't think we chose the best path for going down, and Nicole's rather upset at me for that. No, I'm not upset for you with that. It's just this is very intense, and I think sometimes you view it a little bit too playful, and I wear shoes that don't have the best grip, and then as soon as I get even semi-close to you, you start running again. And, uh, it's just intense, and it's pretty scary, but it's a really good workout for the full body, and um, it's beautiful. So instead of watching this video, turn off your computer and go outside. You heard it here first, folks. We raced down the bottom of the mountain. I took a trail over here, and I beat her. We made it back, safe and sound. Interesting fact, Nicole lost her Ray-Bans. They're like pink plaid Ray-Bans, and they're somewhere near the top of Bell Mountain in Apple Valley, California. So if you guys ever get bored and want to go for a hike, if you guys find the sunglasses, you can keep them. Make sure you let us know though, because it'd be cool to know if someone found them. We couldn't find them. It took us an hour and 15 minutes. For the whole thing? Yeah. Up and down? Yeah. See if you guys can beat it. <laughs> I'm sure they can. All right, now we're going to go back to the hotel. Okay. Okay. That you have fun? Yeah, so much fun. This footage probably sounds terrible with all the wind. At least you got the wind muff. Yep. Look at this. Doing truck things with a truck. Look at, we have, it tells us angular. We're five degrees tilted right now. <laughs> Stay tilted. Oh, whoa, we had 12 degrees for a second. Gnarly. <laughs> Shout out to Ford for telling me my angles. All right, so this is something we were gonna do anyway, but I didn't really think that it would, well actually, we thought about it and we were like, man, this would kind of be cool for the video. So uh, me and Tommy are gonna do a bolt check on the car in the middle of a Holiday Inn parking lot. So uh, Tommy, this is something that uh, is very common on FD cars and stuff. Yes, do it after every time the car comes off the track, uh, like after practice or before qualifying, whatever. We go over the entire car, it usually takes about 45 minutes to an hour, um, and just to make sure that nothing came loose while we were driving, and uh, it's actually not that crucial in an FD scenario, just because the tracks are really nice and they only drive for, you know, eight, 10 laps at a time. 
Well, what we did with Adam's car at uh, Grange was beat the absolute crap out of it. So we got to make sure we go over everything. For three days straight too, by the way. So this is something that Tommy used to do with Pat Gooden all the time. Um, so I thought it'd be kind of cool for uh, us to make a video, kind of just documenting the specific things that we look for. I know I tell you guys like kind of I'm doing bolt checks on my car and tell you guys the stuff that I look for when my car's in the lift at home. But this is kind of cool because we're in a parking lot right now. All we have is two adjustable wrenches. We're not, no, I'm just kidding. We're gonna use tools. Um, but yeah, I'll show you guys kind of all the important stuff to go over and it should be kind of fun. What I noticed gets loose the most on the front end requires a 22 mil wrench or socket. This uh, nut right here that connects the PBM knuckle to the lower control arm tends to get loose. It seems to be pretty tight, but that's one thing that I always check that uh, I notice gets loose after lots of abuse. We haven't checked this both track days just because of the little accidents, but we'll kind of wiggle it back and forth and try to feel for any play in the inner tie rod. So it actually feels pretty good. And then we'll grab a wrench and we'll just snug everything up. Um, relatively simple. Tommy, what else am I missing? Uh, usually we would check, you know, you just visually check the brake lines and stuff like that. And then the two coilover bolts on the spindle, make sure those are tight because um, that will control your camber on the tops top one yep or bottom one uh, if that comes loose then it knocks your alignment off so I'm looking for like wear marks to notice if we have any rubbing issues I don't see anything on the actual chassis um, it's also really important to look if you have your wiring harness not really tucked up here to see if you're like wearing through that because that would make you have a really bad time um, we're fine in that regard but I do notice up front on my sway bar we are rubbing a little bit here they do make a high clearance sway bar that will like give us more room for angle. For now, I'll probably just leave this or hammer it with uh, the sway bar loosened to get it back over a little bit to the other side. But I think I'm just gonna have to deal with it. The wind's trying to lift up my hood. What else, Tommy? So also the caliper mounting points to the knuckle, you wanna make sure that those stay tight, um, which are just back here and one down here. Just wanna make sure they stay tight because if it comes any bit loose and it starts making your brakes wear, or like wear uneven, if the caliper's shaking around. So you just wanna make sure you check those too. Uh, another thing, obviously, since we've been in the desert beating the car the crap out of it in the dirt, um, I'm gonna see if I can pick up some air filter cleaner. Uh, some air filters you can do it with, some you can't. I believe this is one where you can clean it. I don't remember. I might be able to just tap it out, to be honest. But uh, what I'm doing right now, uh, oil's probably filthy. I got like a little oil catch pan down there and I'm gonna change the oil in the parking lot. As stupid as it may sound, another really, really important thing to do with a drift car in between events is cleaning the engine bay because it's very important to be able to spot any sort of leaks or any sort of issues that may be presenting themselves. If the engine bay is dirty and filthy, you're not gonna be able to tell if you're leaking fluid, oil, coolant, whatever. So definitely an important precaution to take. Changing oil in parking lot, not so fun. Changing oil in windy parking lot, extra not fun. Uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that. It sucks. All right, so I got the oil changed in the front. Tommy's working on the back. I know in the back the most important thing, especially because I have aftermarket axles, is checking the axle bolts. Tommy, what did you find down there? Don't shine the light in their eyes, come on. Oh God. <laughs> this was laying off, like about to fall out, and there's two more missing. So. Oh, that's one of the big ones. Yeah. Oh, so that's the one that holds it to the adapter, then, huh? Yes. Dang. Yeah, and there's. Yep, two more missing so far. I haven't looked at the other side yet. We might have to find a hardware store to find some extras. 100%. Yes. That's sketchy. Absolutely. I didn't film it because it's so freaking cold outside, but we just took the car over to AutoZone. Unfortunately, we made the mistake of not going to O'Reilly's. I like my boys at O'Reilly's better than AutoZone. No offense, friends that work at AutoZone. But uh, yeah, and pressure tested the car in the parking lot real quick just to make sure there were no other like water coolant leaks and there weren't any. Their pressure tester sucked. O'Reilly's is dope. Um, I don't have any affiliation with O'Reilly's other than the fact that everybody that works at O'Reilly's is dope and sick and I like them. Um, yeah, that's it. Pretty, pretty true, right, Tommy? Yes, I agree. 